Welcome to the Dietitian Side Hustle Podcast. My name is Katie Dodd and I am a nutrition entrepreneur. But here's the catch. I have a full-time traditional dietitian job. My entrepreneurial endeavors are my side hustle. I've been making six figures through my job and side hustle doing things that I love. If I can do it, you can too. This podcast is for dietitians, interns, and students who want to be inspired to start or perfect the side hustle of their dreams. Let's do this. Hello, and welcome to the 49th episode of the Dietitian Side Hustle podcast, Self-Publishing a Book. Today, I will be interviewing Megan Pacecki. Megan is a registered dietitian, the owner of Nutrition Awareness, and the author of The Optimized Life, a book that she published herself on Amazon. Welcome, Megan. Would you like to share a few words before we get started? Hi, um, thank you for having me. I Podcast number 49. So are you going to do anything special for number 50? Do you have a celebration planned? Nothing planned yet, but I totally should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm a listener of your podcast. I, I can actually envision myself like where I am on my walks when I've been listening to certain <laughs> podcasts of yours. And I reached out to you because I was like, you know what? I just wrote a book and I went through this whole process and I would love to help other dietitians that want to do this just fast forward a little bit because I've kind of gone through everything and anything I could do to help them fast forward their products, their process and get more books by dietitians out there. I would love to do. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I know I was saying before we um, started this podcast, like I'm really grateful you reached out and I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. So I guess as we get started, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, kind of what you do, what you've done and really how you got into the self-publishing game. Sure. So I started nutrition awareness back in 2011 as a side hustle. I was working full-time as a dietitian in a hospital and, um, I made a goal for myself that I was going to quit my job by the end of that year and have been in private practice ever since. So it's me and one other dietitian. We have a brick and mortar in Orlando. And then we also do a lot of virtual coaching as well. And I started writing my book pretty soon after I started the private practice, honestly, but it started as something completely different from what it ended up being. Because as I niched down and as I figured out which clients I love to work with, the book shifted as well. So I just started in a coffee shop, kind of writing down all the things that I knew and all the things that I wanted to share with my clients and kind of went through the process of what I did in when I was consulting with my clients. And then as I grew and I started working with a lot of business owners and high achievers, I recognized that there were a lot of similarities in Mm -hmm. personality types and things that they would do that I felt like if I could just put all this information in one spot and all those life hackers love to read books and they they love to do like the self-help. And if I could just put that all in one place and give that information out to as many people as possible. And that's where I started the self-publishing journey. And the reason why I went the self-publish route is because I had heard, you know, several people say, if you don't have a following, if you don't have 300,000 followers, you'll never get a book published and it costs a lot of money and you have to hire an agent and you have to hire this person and that person and to try to get a book deal. And I didn't want to wait to get a book deal. I wanted to put myself out there as soon as I possibly could. And so that's why I went the self-publishing route because anybody can publish a book on Amazon. <laughs> yes. I, I, I love it. And it's just amazing how we live in this day and age where, you know, you're right. Anyone could publish their own book. Anyone could start a blog. There's so many things that we could do online as dietitians. It's just a matter of like learning what's possible and then kind of like how to do it and starting those steps. So right. I'm so excited to have this conversation. And I know that a lot of dietitians and entrepreneurs, we have this dream of like writing our own book. So can we maybe start off by talking about the different paths that dietitians can take when it comes to getting published? I know you kind of mentioned this, but um, you know, what are those different paths, but then really zoning in on why self-publishing is such a great opportunity for dietitians. Right. And, you know, I think as dietitians, a lot of times you are creating content all the time, whether it's in speaking with your clients and coming up with handouts, whether it's an ebook, whether it's recipes, or you're already blogging, or you have an Instagram, or you're 
doing coaching interviews or videos, or you're already coming up with all of this content. And so because you're a creator, it's really easy to take all of those things to create and put them all in one spot. And that's where I started is just putting everything I created in one spot and going through that and seeing like, what's here that would make sense to put into a book. And so the self-publishing route, um, there are a couple of different routes that you can go within self-publishing. The route that I chose to go was Kindle Direct Publishing, also known as KDP in that world. Um, and it's really easy. You just get on KDP, you register under your Amazon account, and there's a whole school of different videos and educational things that you can go through to just teach yourself how to publish a book. And honestly, it's as easy as uploading a Word document and uploading a cover. And I make it, you know, I sound, make it sound like it's easy, but that process, that part of it is just uploading something just like you would upload something to an email and shoot it off to somebody. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you said about how we're already creating content all the time. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's, I'm a big fan of, especially through blogging of repurposing content of, you know, mm -hmm. I write a blog article and then I can repurpose that for, you know, handouts that I sell for um, social media content. And, and I just, I really love that concept because probably a lot of dietitians out there listening, they're starting to think like, wait a minute, maybe my book's already halfway written. So <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. If you can just have a place where you organize all that content and then insert your client stories or insert your own story, because that's what yep. people really like to read our yep. stories. And so you want the information there, but then you also want that humanizing aspect of having those stories in there. And honestly, that's the easy part to write. Yeah. You know, the information is the hard part to get that in there and get that in, in there in a way that's interesting to people, but then writing the stories of what's happened to you or what's happened to your clients and infusing that with your own personality. That's the easy part. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So next, can you maybe walk us through like what it takes to write a book? Like walk us through the process that you took from kind of idea to like finish book, like before you got to publish, but like to make that book mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. For me, so I, like I, I said, I, you know, I started my book almost the same exact time I started my private practice, but I didn't really get a lot of it done until the past, I would say year and a half. So I had all this information, but then I didn't have the motivation to really work on it or to make it into what is now the book. Mm -hmm. And I would say like, you know what, I've got two free hours. I'm going to work on the book that didn't really work very well for me because I think to get into that creative process and to get really get into a good space for writing, I needed a large block of time. Yeah. And so to be able to do that, I had to block an entire day off of my schedule for seeing clients. So for me, that was Thursdays. And I did that for about two years. Um, and of course things would come up and of course I would take meetings and do other things, but for about two years, having Thursdays dedicated to a book to really sit down and make that happen. And what I did is, you know, I had my outline first and I had about 20 chapters planned for the book. And then I sent that off to five or six different people. And there were, some of them were dietitians and some of them I just were people who I knew read lots of books. A couple were business owners, which was my target market. Mm -hmm. And I got their feedback. What do you want to see more of? What's boring to you? because I was so close to it and I'm in this world so often. And a lot of my clients already have a really good background on nutrition. Like they know what quinoa is. They have kale in their smoothies and all yeah. that kind of thing. So I wanted to know how someone felt who was a dietitian about the information, but then also someone who's more green, that's not really into the nutrition world too. And so I took a lot of their feedback and said, okay, this is what I need to change. And then going from there, like having a, another editing process and having a real editor come in and I just said, tear this thing apart. Tell me what's good about it. Tell me what's not good about it. And that obviously that requires an investment and that requires hiring someone who's a professional and who's good at what they do. It's, I didn't want my husband to be my editor. You know, I wanted him to read through it and tell me what he thought, but then I wanted a real editor who does that for a living to kind of go through it and help me through that process as well. So in hiring that editor, we went back and forth four to five times with edits, but then there was also hiring other people. I had a book marketing consultant that I worked with. Um, I did a lot of online paid surveys 
for people to give me feedback on the cover and the title and the tagline and all of those things. So there's a lot of little things that tend to add up in terms of what it costs to self-publish a book. Because if you look it up, you're like, oh, it's free. You know, it's free to put my book on Amazon, but it's not necessarily free to make it look professional. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm kind of jotting down some notes as you're talking to have a couple follow-up questions from this, because this is so Great. good. So, so I kind of heard you say, like, you started with your outline, you were like, okay, I'm gonna do 20 um, chapters. You found one day a week, you know, one day, you know, carved out for writing, yes. took you some time, but you continued to kind of go through, make it happen. Once you were done, you reached out, you found five or six different people who were in different areas of like your niche, who you wanted to read it to get their perspectives. And I love the idea of getting feedback, but then also the idea of paying someone to help you get it done. You know, I think so often when it comes to getting nutrition advice, how much nutrition advice we can get for free, but how we always tell people mm-hmm. like, go to the dietitian, they're the professional. Exactly. I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves, like, you know, there's other people out there who are professionals too. Can we do something ourselves? Yeah. Is it going to be the best? Maybe not. If that's not like our skill set and what we went to school for. So, so I love mm-hmm. that you had um, just really the, the insights to go out there and pursue those. So um, I have two little questions I want to ask. The first one would be, um, like, do you have any recommendation or is there any rule of thumb or guide as far as like how long a book should be as far as a published book or even like how long the chapters are? Was that something you considered or did you just start writing? Yeah. So I did some research. I actually went to Barnes and Noble and Mm -hmm. picked out the books where I thought like, this is where, this is the category that I would want my book to be in. Or if I was Mm -hmm. in Barnes and Noble, this is where I would want my book to be. And I wrote down how many pages were in maybe 20 of those books. And then I also did the same thing with the chapters. I looked at how long those chapters were. I looked at the font size. I looked at, are there graphics? Are there charts? Are there recipes? all these different things. So I could, I wanted to fit within that category. And I didn't want to put a book out there where my book would be 60 pages. And this other paleo book is 360 pages. So that's what gave me an idea of around where I wanted my book to be. And then you have to consider once the design is done, once the interior design of the book is done, that's going to change a little bit in terms of like the page numbers and things like that. But I would suggest like, look at the most successful books in the category that you want to be in and see if it makes sense to emulate that. Oh, that is great advice. And and I will say when it, when it comes to blogging, I do a similar thing. And so if I have a topic I'm going to write about, I Google that topic and I look at what are the top ranking articles for that topic. And I go look in, how long are they? (laughs) What do they do? Good. What could I do even better? So, so I love that because um, I think that's some really good advice because I, as I was asking you that, I was kind of guessing there's probably no one standard rule of thumb, but it really depends on what your um, what you're writing about and what your area is. So, so right. Helpful. And actually, the the book consultant helped me with that, and she actually told me to even look at the colors mm-hmm. of the books and see like which colors draw you to that book. Or, you know, because there are certain things like with books that are red, it's kind of like a don't do this type of book. With yeah. books that are green, it's all about anti-inflammatory foods and smoothies and spinach and things like that. So even looking at the colors and the fonts of the books that I wanted to emulate was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, that makes me think back of like how these professionals, they have this whole skill set of things we probably don't even think about, like the difference between the colors, the fonts, the psychology of what makes people buy. And that's why I think hiring those people is so beneficial because they're going to probably help you to make even more sales. So even though it costs you money up front, you're probably going to get more money in the long run. So my my next question kind of ties in with like, how do you find these humans, like a real editor and a book consulting, a marketing consultant? Like, how do you find these people if you're going to be doing this on your own? Yeah. So the website that I used for everything was Readsy. It's R-E-E-D-S-Y. And it's similar to a Fiverr, but it's just for books. So my editor, my cover designer, my book interior designer, um, actually I did, uh, the book marketing consultant came from Upwork. So, so so Reezy is similar to Upwork and Fiverr, but that's where I found everybody. And it was just like these one-off projects. And I interviewed every single one of them. Like I wanted to have a conversation with the person to make sure that they were a real person. (laughs) And of course they all have, um, 
uh, examples of work that they've done on those websites. And so you can, I, what I wanted was, I wanted to see, okay, you've edited this book. Is it currently on Amazon? If it's currently on Amazon. I wanna see the link to that book. I wanna see how many of that were sold. I wanna see how that book is doing. I wanna read through the preview of that book. And it's really easy to do online when everything is available on Amazon. You can check up and see if it's something that's up to par. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good idea about doing that research because I think that these sites, like I'm not familiar with um, Readsy, but I'm familiar with Upwork. I always tell Mm -hmm. people there's like amazing, legit people and opportunities, but there's also not legit people out there. So sometimes I feel like, you know, we're like, Ooh, they're low cost. There might be a reason they're that low cost. So, so do your due diligence and and do your research and, and, and you make such a good point that you can go online and see kind of what they've done. So that's, that's, that's perfect. And no, too, I think for me, I'm very used to working on products by myself. And so when you introduce all of these other people into the project, these other people are going to have vacations and other projects. And so you might be on a timeline and think that you're going to be like, I wanted my book to be done by January 1st. Um, Come to find out a lot of people that do work on the side, like the people that I were hot, that I was hiring, they don't do a lot of work in the month of December. (laughs) So a lot of people take time off for the holidays. Whereas for me, I was eight months pregnant. I wasn't taking on new clients. I'm like, I can get all of this stuff done during this period of time. I can get my book out by January 1st. Yeah. I come to find out that that doesn't generally work for all of these other consultants that I was hiring. <laughs> so just keeping that in mind that that may affect your timeline too, once you hire on these, these other people to help. Yeah. That's a very good, important consideration. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, okay. So you walked us through the process of kind of like starting with like your idea, making an outline, actually getting your book done. So now, and I know you kind of talked about this briefly, but now maybe you could walk us through, um, self-publishing on Amazon, like what steps do you need to follow once that book is actually written? I'm assuming like you have a word document for your, for your book, maybe a image for your cover, maybe kind of walk through all those details. Yeah. So I wrote the book in a program called Scrivener and that's kind of like the go-to application for anyone who's writing anything from a script to a novel. And it's just a lot easier to organize all your thoughts within Scrivener than it is in just one huge Word document where you're scrolling back and forth and something's 350 pages. I mean, I can't imagine trying to navigate that within a Word document. So, but from Scrivener, you then convert it to a Word document and that's what you would probably send to your editor or to your book interior designer. And then I actually paid someone to convert that to an e-publishing file that you can then Um, upload to Amazon. So Amazon will ask you for a specific type of file, a PDF for the paperback, an EPUB file for the ebook version. And so I could have done that myself, but I wanted a professional to do that aspect of it too. And it was someone that I was already working with and very comfortable with that did that for me. But myself, all you do is get on and upload the file. So you have a file for your cover, a file for the paperback, a file for the ebook, and you just upload all of that and you decide whether you want to do a pre-sale or you want it to be available right then. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to do a pre-sale to kind of increase the excitement around the book. So I did a pre-sale for about 30 days before the book actually went on sale. And so Amazon just requires that you upload the book, I think, seven days before it's actually going to go out. And you can only do a pre-sale on ebooks. You cannot do a pre-sale on paperbacks. Okay. And so once your book is up there and it's published, if you do a paperback version and you go through Kindle publishing, they actually print the book for you on demand. So you're not doing any kind of printing. You're not finding a printer. It's as that book is purchased, it is then printed and then sold and shipped. Yeah. You don't do any of that. Amazon does all of that. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of benefit to that. And it just really helps with like the passive income piece of a book, meaning like you don't have to buy all these books ahead of time. Every time someone buys it, you got to go ship it off. And just thinking of like what what your time would look like would probably not even be worth the cost of what you're making in the book. So no, I bought, I think I bought 40 author copies because I wanted to send them out to the people that had helped me through the process and just putting all of those in the packages and finding the addresses and taking them to the post office 
and how much that costs to ship them and all the time I was like yeah that would not have been worth it to have 300 books in my garage and be sending them out each time yeah yeah and that's important for people to consider before they make that mistake or maybe people are listening like yeah I got a box of books in my yard or in my garage I wish I didn't do that (laughs) right Awesome. So it sounds like um, Amazon, the KDP, the Kindle Direct Publishing is pretty darn easy. You just have to have your PDF for your print version of your book and then the EPUB file for the Mm -hmm. ebook. Awesome. And then it sounds like you just upload them and you kind of decide like, you know, the details of how you're going to release it and you're good to go. So I love that it's so easy to do. So and you don't have to have a print version. You can oh. just do an ebook. I, it was really important to me to have a print version because I am still the type of person who likes to write in the margins yep. and flip down the page. And so I really wanted to have that, that paperback version. And we talked about the upside to it. We didn't talk about the downside to it. I don't know if you want to do both sides. Let's talk the downside. Yes. Let's, let's talk. Okay. So, so I made it sound really easy, but then the downside is that Amazon takes a lot of money from you, (laughs) from your profit. So uh, my book is priced at $17.99 for the print version, which is rather expensive for a paperback book. Mm -hmm. I'm only getting $5 and 96 cents of that every time Mm -hmm. a book is sold. So what comes out of that is the print cost. So it costs about $5 to print the book. And then they, I get a 60% royalty of whatever is left over after the print cost. Okay. And is that the same for the um, eBooks too, or is that just for the print books? No. So the way the eBook were, so the eBook for me is priced at $9.99. And so you get to choose your royalty. Do you want 70% of that? Or do you want 30% of that? And you get 70% of that if your book is exclusively on Amazon, you mm-hmm. only get 30% if you were selling in other bookstores or places like that. So I think it's like a 17 cents, a 17 cent fee for to download. And then from there, it's either 70% royalty rate or 30% royalty rate. And I chose 70% because I figured most of my book sales were going to be on Amazon anyways. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Do you happen to know if someone starts one direction, can they shift to the other? Like, are they able to change that? Yes. Yes, you are able to change that. So you can choose to go into what's called Kindle. I think it's called Kindle Select. um, And you only have to commit to that for a certain period of time. And then you can choose to go out of that if you wanted to sell your book somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And this is so helpful. And, and I think it's helpful for people to understand that even though your book is 1799, you're not making 1799 because there's, there's costs and expenses to it, but even the benefit Mm -hmm. of you not having to ship it and pay the shipping costs and, you know, it it all it's business. It costs money to make money ultimately. So this kind of ties into my next question. And, and I know a lot of dietitians are wondering about the cost to self-publish and the amount of money they could make. So, you know, money in money out. So would you be able to share your experience? and discuss some of, um, you know, well, I guess this might be my next question. I wanted to ask if um, you could maybe share um, some of the benefits of publishing your book outside of sales, but maybe getting started, just talking about like the cost that went into the book and then how much money you're able to make. Yeah, absolutely. So all in, it costs about $4,000 to publish the book. So that includes the editor, um, the cover design, the interior design of the book, the book marketing consultant, the surveys that I did. And I also included a couple of flights from trips that I took to write the book <laughs> during yeah. these trips. So all in, it was about $4,000. And then so far it's been on sale since April 1st, I've made $900. That is, there's a three month lag. So mm-hmm. Amazon only pay, Amazon pays you about three months after those sales start if that makes so I didn't get a check until I think June was my yeah. first one so I've had June and July yeah so I think that's important for people to understand so it's been four months since you hit publish mm-hmm. yep and nine hundred dollars and is that profit or sales so that's my profit so sales you don't even see how much you made in sales because most <laughs> of it went to Amazon they yeah. only show you. that's just counting the amount of money that is in my account direct deposit perfect. from Amazon <laughs> perfect <laughs> so so this kind of ties in with why I was starting to ask the other question of really speaking to 
um, the benefits of publishing a book outside of sales costs, because I think sometimes there's this misconception of like, you know, I publish a book and I'm just going to make hand over fist and money. And that's not always what it looks like, but there's still all these other amazing benefits for publishing a book. So maybe you could dive into that next. Yeah, I think most authors you would talk to would tell you if you're in it for the money, don't write a book. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's pretty accurate. And uh, if you look at the statistics, I think it's most authors sell less than 100 books mm -hmm. for, for most books that are on Amazon, less than 100 copies were sold. But I think the benefit is to establish you as an expert in your niche so for me, I love working with other business owners. I love working with entrepreneurs and high achievers. And there's not really a whole lot of dietitians that are gearing themselves towards that. And so I wanted to establish myself as the expert in that field. And so by writing a book, that's my hope to be able to do that, to get more speaking engagements and be able to just position myself as that expert. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's so important to recognize is that, that there is so much truth to seeing like a legit book, like, oh, they wrote this book. They, they are the expert. And that yeah. in turn is going to bring in more money for your business through people hiring you or working with you, or just, you know, there's so many benefits of publishing that are beyond just that immediate money that we get. So and it's um, kind of, it's kind of crazy too. Like I'll have clients now that'll come in and they're like, I read your book. And I'm like, you did? you did, you read my book. <laughs> and it's so exciting because on one end of things, it's exciting because I know they've already like have my concepts and they know what's going on. And then on the other end of it, when I do have clients who don't know, I wrote a book and then they find out it's like, that can just solidify all the things that we're working on. And you get all the additional information that I wrote in that book that I want you to get. And that can really help with our coaching process too. Yeah. Yeah. So just hearing you talk, I kind of see three main benefits. Number one, it's like something you're passionate about. It's like, like on the bucket list, you wrote your book. <laughs> Number two, like you are making impact and changing the lives of people who read this book. And so even if it's not a gazillion people, that's still people who are coming in and saying like, oh man, I read this book. This is so helpful. And, and I think a lot of us, we become dietitian, most of us, because we want to help people. And then yeah. number three, also the income that you are able to make through that book, even if indirectly to look at your business long term and how that's going to continue to benefit you. So um, that's awesome. And I appreciate you sharing the numbers too. I, I always think it's so helpful when we talk money, we talk numbers and have these Definitely. real conversations of what this actually looks like. So if someone goes into this, they have a real picture of, okay, if I want to put out a real good, high quality, um, self-published ebook, I'm probably going to have to invest a little bit of money, a lot of time and um, understand what those benefits are going to be and really kind of um, weigh the benefits of, is this for me or not? And I think a lot of people, um, yes, it is. I will tell you that's on my bucket list actually to write a book. And, um, and so that's, that's another reason I was so excited to talk to you. Cause like, Ooh, I could, I could use this knowledge myself. Cause <laughs> that is on my bucket list. So, yeah, I think so many dietitians have a lot of good things to say, and there's not enough of us getting our information out there. <laughs> A hundred percent. There's a lot of authors out there talking about nutrition stuff who are not dietitians and do not know what they're talking about. So the more of us we can get out there publishing, I think the better. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So what action items would you recommend for dietitians who are listening right now? And they're thinking, yes, I want to self-publish a book. Like what are some of the first steps that you would recommend for them to take as soon as they get off this podcast? I would find somebody that will hold you accountable. So for me, I was at a random business meetup meeting other women entrepreneurs and another woman had told me that she wanted to write a book. And I was like, oh my gosh, me too. And we both need a kick in the butt. And so we both agreed that on Thursdays we were going to catch up with each other, whether that was to go grab a coffee or to a phone call or even a text message. And we both agreed that we were going to put together a timeline of, I'm going to be done with this by this date. And we both had very different timelines, but it was somebody to hold us accountable. And I'm sure as dietitians, like that's what you do for your clients. Yep. And so that's what I needed to be able to get my book done too, because I had nobody holding me accountable. And it was just kind of this lofty goal that, yeah, maybe one day this will happen. So I needed somebody else to be saying like, Hey, you said you were going to be done by chapter 
chapter five by the end of July and you're still on chapter three. <laughs> so, so that's, so I would say find either a book buddy or find another dietitian who wants to write a book, someone where you can share information back and forth on your struggles and your triumphs. And I think that's probably the best thing to do to get started. But then also, obviously you need to block off time to be able to do it because these creative endeavors like this, it's really hard to just say, I have one hour of time and I'm going to write my book in this one hour of time that I have during the day. So if you can time block, even if it's once every two weeks, I would say start doing that right away. Yeah. I think that is excellent advice to take something from, you know, it's a dream in your head to actually make it a reality is having that accountability. Mm -hmm. So that way it actually happens. And then time blocks are so huge. And even, um, and, and I hope that people listening hear that because, you know, most people listening are side hustlers and they're like, Oh, I don't have enough time. I can't dedicate a whole day, but mm -hmm. or a day a week, but you know, maybe you could do one day a month. And, you know, I always look at, even if it's a small climb, as long as you're taking steps towards your goals and dreams, you can make them a reality. And, um, and I think that's a really important concept to understand. Just like block out some time when you can, but those big chunks of times are good because I know, um, one of my goals, when it came to writing a book, I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to write for like two hours every Wednesday that never happened. So I'm trying to reevaluate, like, when am I going to have yeah. the time to do this? And <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't like it was a nine hour day on Thursday. I never spent an entire work day working yeah. on the book, but what it did was make sure that that was the priority. And yeah. I was not allowed to let anything else come in until I had worked on it for that day. And maybe some days it was one page yeah. that I wrote and other days it was 20, but it was just the fact that this is a priority every single Thursday and everyone around me knows that this is a priority every single Thursday, but I also had to get myself out of my normal routine. I had to go to a coffee shop where I wasn't at home and had other excuses to get out of it. Yes. Yes. And I heard you say you also took some trips. So it sounds like you also got yourself like out of your state or yeah. Where, so just where did you go? Yeah. Um, so I went to, I did Maine, San Francisco, or Maine, San Diego, and Rhode Island. So oh, awesome. I, I just got on Southwest and Frontier and chose like, what are the cheapest trips at this time period? And went and just hold up in these coffee shops in these new cities to me, because that really got my creative juices flowing and being around other people that were working and just seeing new environments really helped me to put words on a page and feel creative. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Well, I appreciate you so much for being on the podcast. This was um, so informative and I just appreciate all of the knowledge that you're sharing with our audience. So where can people find you online if they want to maybe follow you, learn more about what you do? Sure. So uh, our website is nutritionawareness.com. I'm on Instagram at nutrition.awareness and I also have a podcast that's called the Nutrition Awareness Podcast, where I am the co-host along with my other dietitian, Kate. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on. Oh, and the book, the book is called The Optimized Life on Amazon. Oh yes. And we'll, we'll make sure that there are links to all of these places that you can find Megan online and her book and the show notes. So Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks, thanks so Katie. much for being on. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast, guys. Be sure to head on over to the Dietitian Side Hustle website at dietitiansidehustle.com and check out our coaching page to learn about all the ways that we can work together. Have an amazing day, and I'm so proud of you for taking the initiative to listen to this podcast. Now go out there and get it done. Bye, guys.